when you're working with the web framework, they have a lot of tools that are built in to the framework. Not so much with Flask. Flask has a lot of third-party integrations. You can easily create a pretty simple web app without doing all of these configurations, or you can do something a little bit more complex if you start adding in a bit of those integrations. To use Flask, we're gonna have to download it. So we're gonna go to the internet here. I'm gonna type in Flask. This is how we're going to download Flask. You might need to down Python if you haven't used it before. We are going to download it in a virtual environment. And so a lot of times you'll use virtual environments to organize your dependencies in a Python application. So let's open up the terminal. I'm gonna make this in my desktop and we'll just write virtual env flask tutorial. This is going to create a virtual environment for me. If you do not have virtual env installed, you can install it with pip. We are gonna activate our virtual environment by CDing into our environment and going source bin slash activate. This is how you do it on Mac. I'm using a Mac computer. If you're on Windows, good luck. You can Google around. We're going straight for it with Mac here. Um, we're in our virtual environment, and so this is where I'm going to install Flask, and so I'll go pip3 install Flask. So now we're ready to go clear that up. Go back into our desktop, and bam, there it is, our Flask tutorial. Let's click into that. We will, in here, create some files, and so we're gonna go to Sublime. We're gonna save this as app.py. And inside of here, we'll import Flask into our application. So we're writing a simple Python script that's going to have a few routes and it's gonna start up a web server using Flask. It's gonna be great. But to use Flask, we have to import it. So we'll say from Flask, I'm looking at my notes over here, import Flask. This allows us to create a Flask app inside of our script. From here, we're gonna create a variable called app and actually create that Flask app. So we're gonna go underscore, underscore name. That gives it the name of the file that's running this application. And so the name of our Flask app will be app because that's the name of our script. It's a special property of a Python file. So usually when you first go to a website, the first route you hit or the first page you go to is the home page. You go to google.com, you go to facebook.com, so we're gonna set up the home page for this web app, this Python web app that uses Flask. To do that, we're gonna go app.routes, and we are going to set up some functionality for the home page or the home route, which is just a backslash. We're gonna link it to a function, so whenever a user goes to this page, we're gonna run this hello function. And I've been using Java, so that's so the, the curly braces came out, but we're in Python, so we'll return hello world. So this will show the hello world text in our browser. Then we'll add the thing that's in every Python script, the if name equals equals main. We'll do app.run port 5000. So this will run my app on port 5000. Uh, on my local machine. So we'll be able to access our application or this home route at localhost colon 5000. Let's save this up and run the script. We'll run ls, there's our app.py. We'll run it with Python 3, app.py. There are a couple other ways you could run this script. This is one of the easier ones. And bam, there it is. If you're familiar with IP addresses, one, two, this is our local IP, so I could copy this. We'll paste it in here. Hello world, there's our app. Since the domain name, if you will, of that IP address is localhost, we can also do that localhost 5000, and there's our home route. So that home route is essentially doing that and that is how we're getting the hello world back. If you wanna learn more about IP addresses and local host and all that good stuff, definitely check out my infrastructure course on LinkedIn Learning. It definitely helps me as a creator if you watch that course or any of my courses on LinkedIn Learning. But if you wanna know more about the details of local host, server, client, that's a great place to start. Now, let's do something a little bit more complicated, right? So we'll go back to our script. What if we wanted to show a product page? So a page that displays the details about a given product. Well, we'll do app.route. 
we'll have the route be product and we're gonna provide a product ID that tells us about a given product. This means if I wanna see information about the product with product ID 15, I would go to the route product 15. Int make sure that it's an integer that we're inputting. It's a little safety thing. We'll create a function to go with this. We'll call it product page. And in here we'll write return welcome to percent %d because that's how we do string interpolation in Python. Actually, we'll put product here. So product 15's page. And then we'll put in the product ID. Let's save this. We'll rerun our app. So we'll close this with the control C, run it again. We are running product and we'll say ID 15 and we have an error. Let's see what's going on. Product ID, I probably misspelled something. Oh, another important thing you have to do is add it into the parameters. And so this passes it into the function so we have access to it here. So let's run the server again. Product 15's page, that's what we see here looking good. We can continue to expand upon this by actually rendering an HTML template into our browser. So what if, what if we wanted a more complicated page? Like this just displays text. We can make it more complicated with a template. So we are going to import from Flask import render template. And this is going to allow us to create a more dramatic page. So instead of this, we are actually going to render a template. We're gonna create this file called productpage.html and we're gonna pass in this product ID for us to work with later. So essentially we're going to render this HTML page with this specific data. We of course have to create that page, so let's go ahead and create it. We are going to create a new file. Um, we're gonna put it in a templates folder right here. Uh, that's where Flask looks for HTML templates and so we need to put it in this specific location. We are going to call this template product page HTML. And in here, we are gonna create the template that's going to be rendered by our Flask application. So we'll do, we're gonna do a simple header. So we'll do h1, h1, give it some styling. We're gonna make it green. So we'll go color green and we'll do text align center. You could expand upon this as you would like. So we're gonna do the same text. The product is going to be product ID. So that's how I'm gonna get access to the data is with these curly brackets. And then I'm gonna say page. So it's gonna say the same text, the 15 should go into that product ID location, but the text is gonna be in a header style, it's gonna be in the center of the page, and it's gonna be green. So we're gonna reuse this template for every product ID that, uh, or product page we want to generate. So we have this here, we'll save this. Let's see if we get any errors when we run it. It's looking good. Let's refresh the page. Welcome to product page. Something went wrong. So that's because we actually passed the product ID as the name ID. So let's reopen that product page.html. And since we're passing it as ID, that's how we need to reference it in our template. Let's reference it again. And we gotta rerun the app to see our changes. Let's hit it again. Product 15, we've passed data. Now let's say I go to product nine. We're on product nine's page. This is pretty cool. If you're looking for something to use at a hackathon, this is a great technology to put into your stack and learn more about. Now, if you want to add databases to this, definitely check out my LinkedIn learning course on databases. In the course, we integrate databases into a Flask application and do so much more. If you're interested in that type of stuff, definitely a good place to go and check out. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.